my name is Austin Glass, and I'll be talking about the reasons of why we go to war. Starting with my four main points, such as a just war theory, the evolution of violence, the uh, profit and cost of war, and finally, nationalism. Starting with a just war theory, from Alexander Mosley's A Just War Theory, he states at the very beginning from the 9th century, St. Augustine took, uh, took a concept to give a reason of why we go to war and why God went to war and why the Crusades are happening. But this lasted from the 9th century all the way to the 12th century. From the 13th century, Thomas Aquarius took the mantle and put guidelines among this, as seen here in just ad bellum, just in bellum, and just post bellum. Just ad bellum is the concept of uh, the conduct in which we go to war, as in negotiations have broken down, and the only way for us to uh, get our point across or stop somebody from doing something that is actually morally wrong is to go to war. Just in bellum is the conduct in which we wage our war, as in we will not kill civilians, we will treat our POWs with a sense of respect and not torture them in such, uh, such as this. Just postbellum is the conduct in which we end the war, as in um, when we complete our goal, that's it, we stop. And we help civilians that have, were affected by the war rebuild their homes and things such as this, such as the United States did in World War II with Japan. My second topic has three subtopics, which is naturally violent people, apes, and the war on drugs, or war is a drug. Starting with naturally violent people from Vera Quest uh, researchers who uh, dabble in criminal minds and things such as this for psyche, you can see from their graph it's a combination of both being naturally violent and from where you come from. Um, because if you go with just being naturally violent, it's only a 7%. If you go from your environment and where you grew up, it's an 11%, but it's actually a combination. But yet, people give the excuse, the reason of why we go to war is because of our uh, eight ancestors. And you can see this in Dominic Johnson's interview with Bradley A. Theus, uh, what our primate relatives say about us. It says that apes tend to go to war with each other and actually kill each other for no apparent reason except because they're naturally violent. And that must be the reason of why we go to war and why we have wars. But we can see from our previous graph, it's both not, it's both a com uh, combination of being naturally violent and the society we live in. So we cannot make an excuse that we're naturally violent and that's why we go to war. In fact, it's both a combination of being of our society and naturally violent people. From Chris Hedge's book, A War, A War is a Force That Gives Us Meaning, you can see from this quote, um, war is addicting. And this is, this is true for two reasons. War is addicting not only for the soldier that's coming back from war and wanting to go back to war um, for the brotherhood, but in fact, it's addicting for us as a society. We want war. And this is, we can betray this in the form of nationalism. And this can be actually a very dangerous topic and a very dangerous thing to hit on. But I'll hit on that a little bit later. Starting with the profits, uh, profit and cost of war, I'll tell you, tell you about the real profit of war, the costs of war, and finally the U.S. budget. Starting with the real, uh, the real profit of war from Dr. Jacqueline R. Powell and her essay of why America needs war. She adamantly tells us that why we need war is because of it helps the economy and it helps because of the Great Depression. But in fact, uh, most wars after uh, after the war, it tends to have, give us a recession or a depression. So how can a war give us, uh, get us out and help the economy and get us out of the Great, uh, the great Depression? But in fact it doesn't because it put us, put us into a new war of World War II as the United States paid $288 billion and that's, that's just money. If we're talking civilians, the USSR and the uh, German army, or the German regime at that time, had a combination of both, uh, had a combination of nine million people killed. So these are the real costs of war. So is there really any good economic reason to go to war? I believe that there's not. But yet, we still put 
uh, 55% of our budget, and yes, even though this is from 2015, and we had a budget of 1.16 trillion dollars, we put still 55% of that into our military, and most people say, or uh, give us an excuse of, oh, we need that for our defense, for our protection, but yet we're still going to war, and we're still having these wars, and this is from this is from Hart Martin's report from the Economic Front. He states that if we take at least 5%, just 5% out of our military budget and put it into energy and environment, we could have a more healthier natural source of energy. And you've been seeing on the news that uh, global warming and things like this is a real issue, but yet we still put all this money into our military instead of the environment. Lastly, I'll be talking about natural, nationalism. Is it dangerous? And finally, the George W. approval rating. From Garfield T. Fox's present divide uh, on war and the economy, you can see from this graph that before 9-11, George W. Bush had under 60% approval rating. And then it spiked almost to 90% right after 9-11. So what can this tell you? This is our spike of nationalism. So if, if a president can control war and make us go to war just so he can get more of approval rating, so he can pass a law that he couldn't pass before, isn't that more terrifying than anything else? And even that is our nationalism could well put us into a war that we may not be able to win, and we may come back with more costs than profit. Lastly, in my conclusion, I will state that there's no real good reason of why we go to war. There's only excuses of why we go to war. As in, excuses of, uh, even St. Augustine, he gave an excuse of why God made, uh, God went to war. Because it was justified, because God wanted this. And then, uh, some people say, it's our economy, it boosts our economy to go to war. But in fact, it it puts us into a, a recession or a depression. Um, so if we knock out all these excuses, we may be able to achieve the peace that we've always been looking for.